All right, the joy of the Eucharist. Advent with the Holy Family, a daily retreat, is back, coming back at you. Day 16. Day 16. Super exciting topic today. Yeah. Yeah, like the best. So exciting. It's just, you're going to lose it when, when we tell you what we're talking about. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? <laughs> so on our walk with the Holy Family today, it is, the focus is on... A boring day of pregnancy, a regular old day with Mary and Joseph at the house of Loretto. Just chilling, just getting ready for Jesus to come. Just really pregnant. And hopefully you in this Advent have had a couple boring days. Yes, where it's seriously though. Just a, a day Nothing. where you can not do a lot and prepare. I think I heard the all the Jesus. moms out there cracking up. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you haven't, hopefully you've had a boring hour where you put down the phone, the TV, the whatever. Yeah, and if not, and then our challenge for Jesus. Yeah, our challenge for you today then is to schedule a time of nothing for your family to mm-hmm. just be bored. Yeah. This this is part of the Advent experience because there has to be a longing. There has to be a waiting. And in the Holy Family, can you imagine the longing, the waiting? Nine months, you know, couldn't go fast enough to be able to meet the Redeemer of the world, the one that the angel called Emmanuel, God with us. Yeah, so maybe, and this is a terrible idea, and I'm not going to listen to myself, mm-hmm. but maybe for one night, okay, maybe even just like three hours, but really, let's go big or go home. Maybe for one night. You turn everything off. No Christmas movies. No Christmas cookies. Let's call them Advent. (laughs) Advent cookies, Advent movies. None of that. And just sit in silence. Just wait. Just expect. Just long. And that's the thing. People do this. They like Mm -hmm. turn off all the lights and everything. You do you. you. But (laughs) get some candles out. (laughs) And long and wait and expect. Mm -hmm. So consider the... Consider the Holy Family. Maybe Mary's getting pretty pretty pregnant. I don't know. How pregnant is oh, pretty no. pregnant? Are we doing the fruit thing again? <laughs> yeah, He's for that? sure past avocado. Maybe you're right. Maybe he is a cantaloupe <laughs> now. <laughs> so maybe 30 <laughs> weeks. Who knows? And it's it's just the, the humdrum of everyday life. You know, this part isn't recorded in the scriptures, but we can imagine what life was like in Nazareth, waiting and preparing and hoping and expecting and pondering and questioning. And I'm sure some days the pace was so low. And Mary and Joseph were doing all the things to to prepare for a child just as any family would do. Joseph was trying to finish up his carpentry projects or trying to finish up what contracts he had out so that they would have enough money to feed this extra mouth and he could take his leave. There's no paternity leave in the um, ancient world, huh? Still. Still, still no, even no, in the current world. No, no, <laughs> no leave. Um, trying to, to figure out how he can welcome this child in the best way. And, and Mary's hit her nesting. Mm-hmm. She's getting stuff ready, getting all the linens, the swaddling clothes prepared. <laughs> and there's an excitement in yeah. that boringness too, mm-hmm. in the quiet. In the humdrum every day, there's that Joyful expectation, yeah. So let's imagine like a a conversation between the two of them, right? So Joseph maybe thinks about the humble um, home he sees sees around him and wonders, questions, potentially, Mary, how are we to welcome the Savior of the universe? How are we to welcome the King of Kings, our Redeemer, in these meager circumstances, in this poverty, in this poor house. How could it be? I wish, don't you wish, Mary, that we had riches and honor and a mansion? It only seems fitting, For the king of kings. Yeah. How could it be that he picked us? Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make sense. We have nothing. But then Mary would reply. With so much wisdom that he doesn't need any of that. Right. He doesn't need all this stuff. The savior of the world isn't about stuff He's about our hearts and humility. Poverty and humility to teach us that riches and honors, while not bad in and of themselves, are not necessary for the most important thing, which is faith, hope, and love. But Father, I mean, we are in the Advent season. The secular world calls this the Christmas season right now. Mm -hmm. And we definitely all act like it is the Christmas season. 
shop till you drop <laughs> is the name of the game right now. And so you're sitting here telling all of us that stuff isn't important, that Mary and Joseph, the Holy Family, aren't getting ready for Jesus with a bunch of toys, with a bunch of stuff for him for later. Jesus picked a family that didn't have a lot of stuff. He could have picked any family in the history of the world. He could have been a Romanov. But he picked the poverty, the humility of poor Mary and Joseph in Nazareth. And we're we're supposed to mimic Mm -hmm. all of this. We're supposed to mimic the heart of God, the poverty, the humility. But it is so hard. And Mm -hmm. I mean, we live in Edmond, you know? (laughs) We've got lots of money around here and so many big houses. And that's hard. And during this season when it's all about buying and outdoing each other in love through stuff, Mm -hmm. that message gets very, very hidden away. When there's nothing wrong with stuff per se, but like you say, the poverty that we experience isn't necessarily, I mean, we're a diverse parish. There's all kinds of stuff. But in Edmond in general, we're all doing, even the United States, if we compare ourselves, we're all doing great. Um, All of us are richer than Mary and Joseph. We know that for sure. Um, The poverty that we experience, like Mother Teresa said, is not a poverty of means but a poverty of love. And mm. sometimes we're so busy chasing mm-hmm. the stuff, you know, the, the parent who works all day, every day to afford the bigger, nicer thing or the more toys. Which is, which is a, it's a good desire to want it's to provide the best. a desire to provide for your family. For your family to have that security and that comfort, but then. Until it means you miss out on spending time on with the family life, whom you love. Then it's just not worth it. Right. And it's hard to say no to that big important job that gives you a bunch Mm -hmm. of money but i don't know maybe you can have more without sometimes less is more i think so right isn't that how the saying goes do you ever go to target just to escape from your family no (laughs) never i never do that i never do that i'm gonna go buy some more christmas presents i'm gonna go buy some more christmas presents just so we don't (laughs) get a moment away (laughs) (laughs) But in that, right, and all of it, just like, yeah, showing a gift is a tangible thing that you can point to and say, hey, man, I love you this many dollars worth, <laughs> right? But obviously, it's just one way that we express our love. And it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Everybody, you know, Christmas gifts are good. But there's so many ways to show love that we can't put stuff over and above all the other ways and the quality time we spend together, the way we sacrifice for one another. And, and if it's all in stuff, if we put stuff over and above the love we have for our family members and definitely over and above the love we have for God and his coming at Christmas, then we miss the point. Mm-hmm. And we need to take just a minute to have a boring day with the Holy Family and just togetherness, anticipation, hope, rather than the crazy rat race that we often find ourselves in. So this meditation is going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Boring. Boring. <laughs> well, let's do it. Okay. Let's pause for a minute. Take a deep breath. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Imagine this day, this normal day. Joseph uh, stands by the hearth, preparing the fire to keep the family warm. Mary is putting away kettles and jugs from lunch. And they look toward each other and their eyes meet and they share a knowing smile. And while they're having this conversation of how can it be that the Lord picked this place and picked us? How could it be that he didn't want to be rich as a king but wanted to be poor with you and with me? The little infant in her womb, hearing these muffled tones, knows he's already richly loved. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.